Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about KV because we love this value so much. KV ultimately determines a lot for us in the hobby, and today we're gonna to be looking at how do we unlock speed by swapping the KV value. When we're talking about the term swapping KV, we ultimately mean that we're gonna take a motor and we're gonna switch that motor completely out for a different motor that has a completely completely different KV value. So keep that in mind, we're actually needing to purchase another motor here. So let's dive right into it and find out what our first question is on the board here. First question is, do we go up in KV or down in KV if we want to increase the speed of our radio control car? And there's a couple notes here. We need to assume that we're using the same motor size and this is referring to the can. The can looks like something like this and if we have a KV of 1500, as in that example there, we would choose that same can size but move to a different KV. Another thing here is we're gonna stick to the same voltage for our setup. We're not gonna go and change the voltage going up or down. This was directly as an example or question that one of you ended up asking. This is where this video is coming from. So now let's take a look at the example. So the example that we are gonna go through today consists of a motor that has a 2550 KV and it's going to be operated on a 4S LiPo, and that's gonna stick as a constant throughout this entire video because we're not gonna be changing voltage. It's gonna be the same voltage here. Now the 3660 can, this is kind of information that's irrelevant, as long as we know that we're gonna be sticking to that same can size. Because all of these motors come from the same manufacturer, these are specs that I've actually pulled off of a spec sheet from a motor manufacturer, and I'm using them for the numbers here today, I've listed that it is a 3660 size can that we're going to be looking at throughout this video. We have a maximum of 60,000 RPM. We're gonna come back to what this means for us later in the video. And this motor has a maximum of 74 amps that we can pull from it. Now let's take a look at a couple of the options. Now there are many more options within this can size, but I'm looking at two in close proximity of another. So we go up about 600 kV and we arrive at 3180 KV as our option number one. This particular motor has a maximum current draw of 94 amps. And we have the resistance, this is the RM value of this motor at 0058 ohms. Now if we look at option number two, this motor has a KV of 1900. We approximately go down by 600 KV and this is what we arrive at. We have a maximum current draw of 55 amps for this particular motor and it has an RM value of 0.0. 146 ohms. There's our options for our motors that we could select from. The question is, which motor should we be selecting? We have this 2550 kV motor and we want to get more speed out of our setup. What do we choose? So now that we know that, we can come over to the other side of the board here, the right hand side, and for more speed, we're going to need more power. This is exactly what this states. And that is true because we know that if we want to get something out, we have to put something in in order for us to have a resultant there. And this is our equation where we can identify what do we need in order to get that extra power. Well, power is equivalent to the voltage multiplied by the current, and then your answer is going to be in watts if you use volts multiplied by the current in amps. Now, if we want to increase power, that is what this upward arrow represents, we do not have any change on the voltage. So voltage essentially can become a one. And when you multiply something by one, you get that something still. So that means it's power is equal to amps. If we need to go up in power, we have to go up here in our amperage. Now that helps us identify what we actually need to do. So we can go back to our motor scenario. We have option number one. This motor has a max of 94 amps. And option number two, this motor has a max of 55 amps. If we want more power, we need to select the motor that has a higher current potential. And that is our option number one, which tells us that our KV of 3180 is going to be correct for us to get more power out of this system. And that answers our question, do we need to go up or down? Well, we do want to go up in KV in order to access that potential power. And this is assuming that this motor is not getting to the maximum 
wattage for this specific can size. And I do remember it being 1700 watts for all these motors because they all fall under the exact same can size. So let's assume that we're only pulling about a thousand watts in that system, which means we have 700 watts of potential that we can access by selecting a different motor and addressing our setup in general. Now that we know this, I do want to talk about the limit here in RPM. If you do the math and multiply the 2550 KV by our 14.8 nominal voltage for a 4S LiPo battery pack, you're going to get about 38,000 RPM or so, something around there. And we have a max for this motor of 60,000 RPM. That essentially tells us that we're leaving 22,000 RPM of potential power because we know from our horsepower equation when we take a look at a full size car that you take the amount of RPM, you multiply it by the torque, you divide it by 52, 52 and that gives us the horsepower there in the unit horsepower. So what we know here is that RPM is definitely contributing to the amount of power we can get out of a particular setup. And if we take a look at our option number two, we're gonna have less RPM, which tells us already that it's gonna be very difficult to get the same amount of wattage. Now one could make the argument here that the 1900 kV motor is going to produce more torque for you as it has a lower kV. Now you have to be a little bit careful here when you talk about torque and you relate the torque back to KV because what you get from this specific setup here is a lower KV is actually going to give you a higher KT value. The KT value is the torque constant which is going to tell you how much torque you can get from the motor for every amp that you put into the motor. So it is true that you can get more torque out of this motor for every amp that you put into it. But here's the catch. This motor here has a lower amount of current that it can draw from your system. Therefore, you're gonna have, if you work out the math between this motor, this motor, and the motor here, the torque that all three of these motors can produce is essentially equal. So there's no advantage in torque when you're looking at this setup. The only advantage that you can get here comes back to our horsepower equation where we specifically look at speed. We have to maximize the speed and that's why if you are limiting yourself in the amount of RPM in a particular setup, you do not want to be around 50% of the RPM potential if you're looking to maximize power out of this setup. What you want to do is get that KV up so that you can achieve this maximum or closer to it without going over. If you do go over, then you risk damaging that motor mechanically through some type of mechanical failure. So now let's go back to our conclusion here, which is under the green line. So this is very key when we're looking at how to actually use our higher KV to get more speed out of our radio control car. What we want to do is reduce the load. If we just simply swap from a 2550 KV motor up to a 31 KV motor, we can actually damage the motor and overheat the motor because we could run the risk of going over that maximum 94 amp limit here that that motor spec has. And we don't know that unless you have a data logger within your system. And we'll get to another area that we can look at as well. But before we do that, what we can do, and my recommendation when you go and jump up to this significant difference of KV, is to make sure the overall top speed of your car is going to be lowered compared to what it would be using this 3180 KV. And the way that we do this is by checking these few items. The big point here is the changing of gearing. This could be either the pinion gear or the spur gear or a combination of both of these, as well as even looking at subtle things such as the timing within the ESC. Maybe you want to lower the timing to make it a little bit easier on all the components there in your power system. Or even something I've done in the past is look at tires. Reducing the diameter of the tire can also reduce the load of your overall system. Them. Not always is this practical, so it's probably one of the last things you want to consider. Gearing is going to be your number one choice. And you may have to go to custom gearing here as we've seen on this channel not too long ago. So what I want to do here is give you an example as to exactly what I meant 
hint when we were talking about the KV going from one value to another being significant, and that's gonna give you a significant amount of speed output. Let's take a look at what that means for us. We're gonna go on to the RC calc sheet here from the Patreon website. You can download a copy of this if you become a patron on the Patreon website for the RC Explained community. If you're not interested in that, you can use a more simplistic calculator here found at this URL on the radiocontrol.com website. So now back to our calculator, there's a lot of information that is possible to enter into this calculator here in order to get all of the correct values. What we want to do is enter our KV value here under this green box for KV. It is 2550. That's going to give us the value for our factory setup that we ended up using as an example. Now another thing we want to do is we don't have limitless. We're not going to run this vehicle. Let's choose the Vendetta. This is going to give us a different gear so we don't have to go and look those up in this calculator. This is now the stock gearing in that configuration using a 2550 KV motor. Now what we want to do here is look at the speed. We are getting 65 miles per hour out of this system. We're going to go and enter 65 here on the right hand side. This is just a formula that I put in here for us for this specific video. Otherwise you wouldn't find this section of the calculator here. So now what we want to do is go to our 3180 kV motor and we can go and enter that into this box as well, 3180. This is going to give us a difference in kV of 24.71% and we now have an output of 81 miles per hour. We're going to expect the same amount of uh, difference here. So we got 24.71 versus 24.62, very similar in nature. So now what we want to do is utilize the gearing change because we don't want to have a 24% increase in speed. This is a recipe for overheating, a recipe for disaster, and we certainly do not want to change components after burning them out. We want to prevent that. So all we need to do is change either one of the pinion gear or the spur gear or a combination of both. Now one of the things that we could do is drop by a few teeth. Let's go to a 16 tooth here and look at our output. Our output actually happens to be 65 miles per hour which matches the same as our 2550 kV. However, we're utilizing the 31 k 3180 kV motor right now. Now this would be actually a really good idea idea if you wanted to go and swap to a 16 tooth pinion gear matching the same speed checking for temperatures and then going up one tooth at a time until you get to a comfortable temperature on that brushless motor. So you can see if we go to a 17 tooth pinion gear here we're going to get an output of 69 miles per hour. If we go and place that speed here in our calculator we're going to go up by 6% in speed 25% nearly in our KV and this is much much more reasonable for looking at speed here in our example. This is what I meant to a T as to what we're referring to when you want to reduce the amount of load because you don't want to bump the speed up by 24% if you don't have that much room and ultimately we don't usually know how much room we actually have there. Hope this now gives you a sense as to what's going on in our power system so that we can identify the correct components for our system. Now back to the whiteboard. So that's how you can use that higher KV and ultimately the reduction in load is to save us from potentially burning out our power system because we're going to such a drastic difference here in our KV. So now let's move on to the next step here. With a higher current draw, heat is going to go up. How do we know this? Well, the maximum amount of current here of 94 amps is going to produce more heat in our power system. And what we need to do to compensate for this is check our system. Maybe we have to add a heat sink. Maybe what we want to do is increase the amount of airflow in our system. Or what we can do is even add a fan to help cool that motor because it's going to be getting hotter. These are all things that we have to be careful about and consider when we're making a drastic change in our power system. Now the ultimate thing here is at the bottom. What you want to do to make certain that all this is true and perhaps even before you make a change is check the temperatures on the ESC, on the motor, on the battery pack, all of those components to make sure they are going to be 
under the maximum threshold. I would recommend for the battery, your lithium polymer battery pack, a max of 140 Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. Look up the specifications for your motor and your ESC. If there is none, you can assume that 140 Fahrenheit to about 150 Fahrenheit is a good maximum that's gonna keep everything very reliable and that is definitely a conservative number. You probably can push it a little bit beyond that, but I wouldn't recommend it if those specifications are not readily available for you to review. So once you know that the temperatures on a system, if you operate that system for only a minute and it is getting hotter than that, let's say 150 Fahrenheit on your motor, then what you want to do is dial back by reducing the load here again and changing your gearing. This could be your pinion spur or combination of both of them. If you know that everything checks out and is good, then you're good to operate that radio control vehicle. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.